Okay, hi guys. Um, we are moving on to set in sleeves. Um, now the set in sleeves are a little bit more intricate only because the pattern is very specific. Um, these ones are a little bit harder to cheat, so um, if you could print these ones out, that would be the best bet for sure. It contains three different three different pieces, and it's kind of specific how you're going to cut these out. So um, when you go to print these, just make sure to print them to fit the page. Um, don't scale them up or down because they're made to fit each other. So again, there's three different pieces, one sleeve, a bodice back, and a bodice front. It's really similar to the little vest that you made for the facing sample. Um, the only thing is, is that this one's very specific because the sleeve specifically fits this opening or this hole here. So when you go to cut it out, like I said, when you print it, print it out um, just, just to scale. You don't have to, um, you know, uh, make it any bigger or any smaller. As you print them, they should be, because they're PDFs, they should be the perfect size. Um, one thing that I will say is that these contain darts. So I kept my darts in here because I kind of wanted to show you how you would sew a dart. Um, so any of these triangles that you see on the bodice, so you'll see one on the bodice front, and you actually see two triangles on the bodice back, one on the shoulder and one down on the waist. Um, those are darts. And, oh, actually, Abby, put it in the garbage tray. Those are darts, and those I'll show you how to sew one of them on um, the shoulder and then one of them on the front, just so you can get an idea, um, since you guys didn't complete that sample, um, but you did do an assessment for it. So I'll go through those. Another thing that you'll see when you go to cut these out is you'll see that there are notches on here. So again, these are similar to the way that the notches look on your commercial patterns. Um, they're a little bit different. These ones are like a capital I shape instead of a V shape. Um, and the way that I've indicated them on my um, cut fabric is instead of cutting out two triangles or a triangle, I actually just made a little cut into the capital I shape or capital T shape. And I just made about a quarter inch snip at the most. You don't want to go much bigger than the actual notch itself. Um, and it's just a way to indicate um, where your notches are. So I've got two notches on the back piece, a notch on the front piece. On the sleeve, I have two notches for the back and a single notch for the front. So it's important that you identify all of those. So right now, I'll go ahead and show you how I'm going to identify those notches on my sleeve by simply taking the tips of my shears and just making a little, oh, I don't know, at most about a quarter inch snip. And then on the backs, at most, just a little snip and then a little snip. So you can see here, I've got my snips and here I've got my single snip. Okay, one other thing that you want to make sure of is that when you cut these out, you're cutting them out with the fabric face up. The reason for that is because we're only going to make half of a shirt. And so in order to make half of a shirt and to have the sleeve fit correctly, you have to make sure that you're cutting out the pattern pieces all the same direction. So you're going to make sure that your fabric is pretty side up. That's my wrong side, pretty side up. And then you're going to place your sample piece on top and then you're going to cut it out. So that's my sleeve. Again, I've already got my notches for the two in the back, single in the front. Um, that's gonna be some uh, a way that you can easily identify a front from a back. So if you made PJ pants, you may have noticed that there were double notches in the back pieces and single notches in the front. There are always more in the back. So if your front has two, your back will have three. If your front has three, your back will have four. So there's always more notches towards the back. Um, you can also see that on this sleeve cap, the curve here is a little bit different. So that's something to remember also. So again, if I look at this piece right here, this says my bodice front, half scale, cut one from fabric. And I went ahead and did that. And I have a single notch in the front. So I know that that's my front. It's got a single. My back is a little different. It's at um, it says bodice back here, half scale, cut one on fabric, and you'll notice that I have a double notch in the back because again, there's always more in the back. Now, one other thing that I've done with my scissors is I've used the legs of the dart. So remember, there's legs on a dart and then there's a dart point. I've used the legs of the dart and I've snipped those with my scissors just like I did with my notches. And that lets me know that my dart legs are right there along the snip points. Now my dart point, this section here, that I will need to mark with a marking tool. 
So that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a pin in there and I'm going to prepare that for my marking. And then same thing down here at the bottom, I've snipped the legs and my point is at the very end. So I'm going to go ahead and put a pin there so that I can mark that. I've gone ahead and done that already on my front piece. So again, I've snipped the legs on the bottom of my uh, front bodice and I made a mark where the dot was and that's my dark point. So make sure that you're using some type of a fabric marker. So some type of a water soluble ink pen. The fronts are done. And I'm gonna go ahead and flip over to the wrong side of my fabric and mark the dark point for each of my darts on my back piece. You don't have to do these darts for the sake of the sample. I'm simply doing them so that everything lines up and so that you can kind of see how darts work and how they shape the material. Again, because we didn't get to do that on our samples, we did it as an assessment last week. Okay, so now I have my front piece ready, my back piece ready, and my sleeve ready to assemble. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you're going to seam finish the areas that are gonna get stitched first. So you're gonna to wanna to seam finish the shoulders of both the front piece and the back piece. You're also going to want to seam finish the side seam of the back and the side seam of the front. So when these go together, these will get connected. Side seams and shoulders. And so you'll end up with a little tiny little vest. And you'll see that there's still a hole opening here and that's where the sleeve will go so i'm going to go ahead and seam finish those but the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how to create the dart pretty easily so what you're going to do when you create the dart is you're going to take pretty sides of the fabric and you're going to put them together matching the little snips that you made which are the dart legs so i'm going to line those up on top of each other i'm going to go ahead and pin that And then I'm gonna take the little dot of the dart point and I'm going to push that to the very, very, very edge. And I'm gonna pin that in place and I like to pin perpendicular to my stitching line still. And if you want with this sample, you can draw a line if you want or you can simply start to stitch from your cut legs to your dot. If you want to make a line, you can, if that helps you, you can always use your seam gauge if that's a little easier to get a guideline from dart leg to dart point. Otherwise, you can just do it um, eyeballing it point to point. Okay, so let me go ahead and stitch that really quickly so you can kind of see just how this is going to shape the material. And when we are working with sewing darts, you can stitch with a back stitch on the end of the legs. So that's okay to do. You can feel free to back stitch at the legs. That's going to get encased in a waistband or maybe into a skirt, maybe this is a dress, but that's going to get closed off. So you don't have to worry about not back stitching there for a bulk. However, as you get to the dart point, you do want to do something different. And there's a couple of different options. We went over those in that darts module. My favorite thing to do is go to the very, very, very point. So I'm stitching two and I'm at the blue dot. I'm gonna stitch one stitch off of the fabric. So I'm actually going completely off of the material. Then I'm gonna pull this away from the machine. I'm gonna cut my threads kind of long and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a knot by hand with my thread here. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and tie this in a knot. You can do it a couple of different ways too. If you want to go, you can kind of not back stitch, but you can shorten your stitch length and stitch and pivot and go the opposite direction. So there's a couple other ways that you can do it. Um, I like to just stitch off the material at the very, very end. And then I like to tie it in a knot and I cut leaving, uh, I don't know, about a quarter of an inch. Now you'll kind of see that this, what was a flat kind of bodice before 
now has a lot of shape to it. So your next project may have darts in it. So you may be making, I don't know, maybe a dress um, or a blouse with a zipper in it, and it might have some shape to this. So you could see that if you were wearing this, this would fit around the bust of the body. So it gives it a lot of curvature, that simple little dart. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and prepare this with a seam finish along the shoulder of the front, the shoulder of the back, and the sides, both of the front and the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and seam finish all four seams, one, two, three, and four.